call for greatness. The chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Welcome back to Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We still out here at Summer League. We're in a secret location in Las Vegas. Too many people was pulling up on us. So we had to get the spot. But we got a very special guest today with us. Entering his ninth season in the league. One of the best big men in the game coming off a career high year. Just re up with the Pacers back in January. Miles Turner. What's yes. going on, bro? Appreciate you pulling up. Yes, sir. Yeah. And before we get into all that, as always, this show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. So go ahead and make sure you download the app. Use promo code Gills Arena. They'll match that first deposit up to $100. But now that we got that out the way, first things first, bro, we got to talk about the Rubik's Cube chain you got on, man. What's, what's, what's going down? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I got a big persona, man. Big personality. Everywhere I go, I'm going to show who I am. A Rubik's Cube right there, I kind of a. Uh, I love Legos. I love puzzles. I love putting stuff together. I'm a creator. At the end of the day, I'm an artist, right? I feel like even basketball, my talent is the byproduct of my art. And I got to realize that a couple of years ago, you know, when I first came to Leo's, I was a little insecure about like the way I moved or whatnot and like the stuff I like, cause it coming with the culture, it wasn't like cool, if you, as you will, you know? But like, I created my own lane with all this type of stuff. You know, I know niggas rocking me because of the way I move and I've never switched up. I've always been myself. So I like to show that in my personality. You know, I got my jeweler back home. My uncle's house always got me right. So you now shout out to him, big Al, got me love. So yeah. Can you, can you, you know how to, Absolutely, brother. Okay. The fastest time I've done a Rubik's Cube is about a minute and 19 seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, people are doing out here in three seconds, five seconds. I aspire to be that one day, but for right now, you know, I stay in my lane. <laughs> I, I, hey, man, I fuck with that because as a creator, myself, you know what I'm saying, motherfucker, we trying to knock on my shit. I create my I own shit. shit on, it's all my custom <laughs> shit, you feel me? So I, I respect you for standing in that because it's hard to, you know, look at everybody else's criticism of what you do and how you do it because they can't do it. And it's like when you're an artist and you're a creator, that's where you got to stand in that so you can continue to do it. So I commend you for that shit, bro. Appreciate it. Both y'all here coordinating. So got to coordinate. Got coordination. Feel me? You got, got to coordinate. <laughs> so you're from Texas and we got to have this debate. California's got the best hoopers. That's not debatable. <laughs> <laughs> which, state, which state is number two? Is Texas number two right now? You know, I had to debate my boy the other day. Um, I'm biased, so I was going to put Texas up there. If I know North Carolina, put some hoopers. You know, Illinois put some hoopers. Uh, you got to throw D.C. in there. Like, I show love to all the basketball world. But as far as, like, past and present, Texas is definitely up there, bro, from what we've done. Even my class itself, coming out of 2014, we had five McDonald's All-Americans. And you got to go back just from what we've been doing, like, for years now, bro. It just goes way back. There's always good bump in Texas, bro. Nowadays, people are out in L.A. playing pickup or your Miamis, even New York. But, like, people sleep on Texas, bro. We got Dallas. We got Houston. We got Austin. Everybody produces hoop is where we're from. You said five McDonald's All Americans at one, in one class. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. That's a lot. So, yeah, someone, a lot. someone said that's one of the best McDonald's rosters of all time. I mean, obviously, 95, 96, 04, 07. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that 2014 class? Um, I love my class, man. I mean, I got to show love to everybody. I mean, it was Justice Winslow, Justin Jackson, Amanda Moody, uh, Kelly Oubre, and myself. You know, we were able to go out there and kind of create our own lanes. But this basketball stuff goes so much deeper than the actual just hoops, bro. People are actually creating brands for themselves outside of hoops. That's the type of stuff I look at. Your game will always speak for itself. The real ones that know how you rock, rock, but what you create for your families, your states, your cities, your lane. Like I'm from a small town, I'm from Bedford, Texas, right outside of Dallas, right between Dallas and Fort Worth. What I've been able to do to put on for my city and the people around me has transcended anything I can do on the court. And that's kind of stuff I look at. Did, did you, what, what, you said that class was where, ranked where? Oh, it wasn't. Y'all fucked it up. Well, damn. I was going to say, wait, who, who's wait, everybody say for, to, 2014? Who's everybody? You? <laughs> who's everybody? <laughs> you ever been hey, I'm just saying, a few you? Days. I've been off the gentleman's cut. All right. Zion out there perusing the casino looking for us. We got to move locations. He said he's going to run up on us again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I always show love to every McDonald's class. So I'm gonna say I think we had we had four or five in mind. Yeah. Just from, 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 from yeah, out of I'm Cali. From, from Texas though, that, I mean that's a lot. Yeah, I know. I know. We expect, listen, we expect us. Okay. That's just how okay. we roll. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's all how right. we roll. All right. That's okay. how we roll. Okay. <laughs> you know, all right. okay. When that All Star game, they might as well just have the All Star game in, in Cali that. every year because half the team is from Cali. <laughs> half the team is from Cali. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about you a little bit. You one of the best defenders in the league. Led the league in blocks in 2019, 2021. Have yet to make an all NBA defensive team though. Mm -hmm. So how come, how come you don't get the love you deserve? What do you think is going on behind the scenes where, cause you be out there doing your thing, man. And, and, it, and it's really bothersome when, when we see play, players like yourself not getting 
the credit they get for doing the things that they do. Yeah, I can get in my feelings about it, bro. I think like a few years ago, it used to really kind of like get at me. But then I realized, you know, the game is a hustle behind everything. When I write, I'm in a smaller market. I played in Indiana. You're not going to view us on TV every night like your Lakers or your Celtics. When they play on ESPN, whatever, what, every night. You know, we only get so much exposure. Another thing, we ain't been to the playoffs in three, four years. So people aren't going to take you serious if you ain't winning, you ain't got that much success. Individual success is one thing, but team success is everything when it comes to the NBA, bro. Like, you got to put everybody behind you on. So if you're not winning, it's like, how good are you really doing? But at the end of the day, when you get in between them lines and you know you're going against Miles Turner, you know what to expect, bro. They ain't going to give it all every single night. Every single night. One of the best drop defenders. You know he's one of the best shot blockers and he's a competitor. You know, I know I'm speaking to the third person, but you feel me? Like, no, nah, you got to. You got to. <laughs> yeah. 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 You got to. Ain't no one going to put me on like I can put myself on. And that's kind of what I've realized since I've been in the league or maturing and whatnot, right? I can I can sit here and wait for stuff to happen or I can make stuff happen. Yep. And I know that's what I'm going to do. I'm an asset to any organization I'm with. I've been loyal to Indiana since I've been in the league and whatnot. They know what I provide. So when you get in between the lines, you know how I'm a rock, bro. And I don't need the outside validation for that. The brotherhood, the ones that know that 450, know what I'm gonna rock every night. But my thing is, when, when you're talking about like, like defensive awards, right? I've never understood the metrics mm -hmm. of how you're, you know, um, deciding, right? Like, you know, like when you have two players on one team, a guard and a big man, who's actually getting that stop, right? If I'm stopping my man and then the defense, are you both getting the same stop, which makes you both look good versus an independent person who's out there playing defense by himself? Yeah, it might not, the, the team might not be a great defensive team, but as an individual, this person is versus you got two players on one team playing defense, but they're both getting the same award, which never made sense to me. So, you know, like you're leading, you know, the NBA in blocks, Obviously, you're a defender, which means you should automatically be on a, on. Oh well, the team is horrible at defense. Well, he ain't. <laughs> right. It's a popularity contest. Well, man. he's. You know, they're not winning. That doesn't stop him from playing defense, right? right. You know, if we're not winning, if I go 0 and 82 and I average 38, I'm leading the NBA in scoring. I'm number one, right? Same thing with. <laughs> same thing with defense. So you know, they fucking with you. Analytically. We talk stats, right? All the time, stat man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so when you look at the stats and you, you look at like a guy like Draymond, right? Statistically, he doesn't show all of the things that he does for the team on the stats because he does so many different things to affect the game. Just like you, you alter shots because niggas know when you go in there, Miles is in there. So you gotta either dunk that shit or dish that shit. Right. So your metric, just like how Dwight used to alter the game, it wasn't always him leading the league in blocks, but it was just the way that the fear that you the bro. intimidation yeah. when you know you go in there and he not going to be late for this. Like he's going to meet me at the rim. I got to either dunk this shit or have some crafty shit with me. And so even you talk about drop. In the, in the pick and roll. Like a lot of those metrics are not seen when you're showing and going. Like you was talking about Dwight yesterday. Dwight getting out there, he coming back. Mm -hmm. That's a stabbing defensive. Yeah, ball, that's a, like, yeah, yeah, stabbing at the ball. Kenya Martin used to do that all the time. Kenya Martin never got no love. Man, bro. never got no oh, love bro. for shit like that. She and guys, KG, you know what I'm saying? Like you look at those metrics and you say, who's judging defensive players of the year, all defensive teams when you, uh, Gil was always talking about how Marcus Smart and, um, uh, with the hairline, Derek White. Derek White, how they got certain <laughs> defensive, you know, uh, accolades. And it was like, they can't fucking guard nobody out there when it's time to fucking guard niggas. Right. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I feel like it's about reference point. I had the, you know, opportunity to be blessed to play, you know, FIBA a couple of years back. And the NBA rules are so much different than the overseas rules. And when you get a chance to actually play in that environment and stuff is so much more physical, you really got to respect it as a defender. As when the league, it's a little bit different. You know, they call a little bit stuff more often. You know, outside of the playoffs, one they call stuff more often. I mean, it's a little bit. I'm not going to say softer, but like it's just not the same, bro. Overseas, yep. people are built like a little bit different than like within that rule set. You know, absolutely. Wait, wait. You average. You have six seasons averaging two, damn near two and a half blocks a game. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. Bro. I've been doing this a long time, bro. Six yeah. out of the eight seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's and, and then don't make one team like not one defensive team, bro. Been in the playoffs, you know, four four or five years out of my eight year career. 
Um, I've been putting on for a long time. Like I said, I've been one of the best drop defenders. Analytics is everything nowadays, right? That the metrics and whatnot. You could do deep dive into analytics. I'm one of the best defenders, but I'm not one of the best marketed defenders. Yep. There's a difference when it comes to the NBA, bro. Yep. You know, I mean, I I respect the brand. I respect the way that people within the organization move. But when it comes to actual defensive numbers, I've never gotten the respect I deserve. But it's all good. Like I said, I don't need the outside validation. Hell yeah. no, Lopez is make all. Oh, yeah, on, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> Talk about it. I don't think no one fears Lopez on defense. Mm-hmm. No one's oh shit, I got to play against Lopez today. Nah, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? No, I mean, even even um Stephen Adams. Like no one's scared of these dudes. Can you see that on your side though, when you playing against dudes? And, and Rashad was talking about just altering shots. If you see the blocks and the blocks show up in the stat sheet. But if you make a dude take a bad shot, for me, that's just 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 as, that's just as important as a block. So do you see dudes change and shift their game up when they see you out there ready to beat some shit up? Absolutely, bro. You have your casual fans and you have the ones who actually know the game. I know when I'm out there and I'm playing Pulse. against people, you're not driving every time. When I come out the game, everybody's downhill. It's like, okay, now's the time. You yeah. gotta attack. Yeah. When I'm in the game, they gotta change up their whole, like, I don't know, their whole offensive scheme. You know what I mean? And like, that's the type of stuff that doesn't show up in the, uh, the stat sheet like he was talking about. And that's the type of stuff I pride myself in. And I've had a lot of, honestly, it's been a lot of fun just being that dude, bro. Like, I can kind of move however I want to move. When it comes to the whole intimidation thing, I don't have to have a fake personality. I can always just be myself. The talent will always speak for itself. The art will always speak for itself. And that's why I'm able to do and rock over the way I move. I look at guys like Dennis Robin, man, someone I look up to as well. He's able to go out there be himself off the floor, then when it comes on the floor, you know you're getting that dog. And that is the type of stuff I pride myself in. So you're getting that dog on the defensive end, but you're also getting it on the offensive end. You're yes, coming sir. off career high year, once they were like 18 and eight, we round up on this show always. <laughs> you know, we round up. 18 and eight, shoot 54% from the field, 37% from three. So what was different about this season compared to your, your first uh, seven? Bro, I got to play my position. <laughs> Y'all realize that out of the past four years, I've been playing out of my position. I've been playing the four. Now, don't get me wrong, I pride myself and be able to be positionless and play, especially in the new NBA, you have to be able to do everything. But the five is something I played my entire career, especially defensively. When I'm able to go out there on offense and be the lone man to roll or to pop, yeah. you have to worry about what I'm gonna do. And to post up, bro, I'm gonna get to my right hand every time. Big Al Jefferson, my OG, bro. Like, oh, Big, Al. <laughs> Big Al is my OG, man. He told me, bro, they can't stop you. One of the and goats. he instilled that confidence in me. James Johnson, my OG right now, they instilled like confidence in me and like just to go out there and to be myself. Whereas when I was at the four, I was always guessing, like, do I cut? Do I space? Am I supposed to rule? Am I supposed to pop? Nah, at the five, everything is natural, man. So I don't know, man. I've been able to actually just kind of step into my own lane this year. And I know it's only the beginning. I'm only stepping into the prime of my career. So I'm just a creator, man. I got so much, so much more to go. <laughs> the prime. Wait a minute. You're only 27. Yeah. <laughs> you still got, what, two more years before you hit your prime? <laughs> stepping into it. <laughs> so you came in, what, 18, 19? Yeah, so I, no, I came in. No, I came in in 20, 2015. No, I'm just and 18, I came, 19 years old. 18, 19 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Exactly. So look, I love that you said Al Jefferson is the OG because I played with Al. Yeah. So I, when we talked about Cat in, in Minnesota, and I was like, look, Cat ain't got nothing on Big Al. What I seen Big Al doing two years when he got his contract, and he was killing Yao, he was killing KG, he was killing everybody. Oh, All yeah. right. Oh, to get to right. all right. I mean, you call him all right, Al. Go Pum's all right. Pum's Pum's all right. Can't you stop right. it. Scoop like, yeah. But he had everything with his game, like you said. And this was during a time where there wasn't a lot of pick and pop threes. And Al wasn't no shoot, he shoot mm-hmm. no threes like that. But he got to his spots. He could shoot the jumper. Mm-hmm. He had that pump fake. But everything was all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, it was, it was so cold, right? So to see that that's where you took a lot of that offensive mentality. Hey, you, you're not going to stop me getting to my right hand. I don't have to do anything outside of my element. I can shoot the three. Mm-hmm. I can post up. And I love the role. Like, a lot of guys don't even like the role. They don't like contact, bro. And I feel like that's what people, when I was at the four, I guess I'm, I guess the perception of me was I didn't like contact, bro. No, I love getting in there and mixing that shit up. I love to compete, bro. I love competing more than I love the game of basketball itself. And that I applied it to life. Yeah. Like, bro, I just kind of found my, my niche in this, like, very early. So, mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. So we out here at Summer League. Obviously, all eyes have been on Victor Wimbenyama. You actually got the chance to work out with him last summer. So what did you see from those experiences just working out with his game and his development? Vic's going to be around for a long time. I'm going to tell you all that right now. I think that 
for what I saw, for his frame, like all love seven five, by the way. All of it. Like, bro, people look at him like, okay, he's skinny. We gotta go at him. We're gonna hit him. It doesn't matter how hard you hit him, bro. I've trust me, I've tried. You hit him, he's gonna recover. He's seven five. So even if you bump him off his spot, he's long enough to recover defensively. He's gonna be an elite drop defender. He don't gotta be a switch guy. If you want to go out there in the perimeter, he can do it if he wants to. But at the same time, he can shoot the three offensively. He can post up. He got crazy handle. You know, Tim Martin was our trainer and whatnot. We was able to go out there. Got to show big ups to him. Like, he literally got us in the gym and had us working on our, our game nonstop. But Vic is going to be fine. But as y'all know, when it comes to overseas niggas coming into the NBA, we're going to test their mentality. And that's where Vic's got to get a little bit better. It's like, his, is that dog in him and whatnot? I feel like it's deep down in him. He has it, but he's got to put that on display. Because for people trying to, you know, create opportunities for themselves here in the league or here in America and whatnot, they see overseas coming in, they see that as, oh, you're taking my spot. And that's what it is. But when he comes over here, you don't really realize that as a European player or as, especially as a younger player. So when he even does that mentality of like, you know, it's me against the world, like you're not taking what I got, he's going to be just fine. He had that little rocky start that had a crazy game the next game. Y'all going to see what he's capable of, man. I think he's going to be a great player. How how? How excited are you or how much are you looking forward to actually having to play against him now, NBA regular season game? And like you said, he's going to have that target on his back. So it's all love, young fella. But yo, at the end of the day, like, yo, I got to get mine too. Same thing I just told you. It's like someone's trying to take your spot. Every year, as y'all know, 60 more players coming in. And then, you know, so either you're going to get overtaken or you're going to shine. I know me personally, I'm a confident motherfucker. Like, I know I'm going to shine. But when it comes to Vic, when he comes in and whatnot, it's all love when we get between them lines. You got to bust the ass. That's what it is. If he, anybody else has a, who has a platform and you're going between the lines and you're you playing against them, you know, okay, if he has all these eyes on him, oh shit, it's my time. Because if you're watching him play, but then it's like, oh shit, Miles Turner busted his ass. It's like, who, who's this Miles Turner? Like, people don't really see that. But once you get that opportunity, you got to take it. And that's what he'll learn as he goes into this. It's a fucking business, bro. As y'all know, as players have been around this, at the end of the day, this shit is a business. Let me ask you this, though. Mm -hmm. See, he got injected into the San Antonio Spurs, right? So a guy like Tim Duncan never was known to be that dog. And everybody was trying to get that dog out of him. But he was always fundamentally sound where Timmy didn't need the dog to do what he did. So I always feel right now with Wimby is he's been injected to San Antonio where they don't have the dog mentality. And he's going to need that. So how is he going to translate what you're saying he needs where he is when everybody's coming at him like that. Well, that's on the front office. You got to get some dogs in that locker room to build a mentality. When I first got in the league, I didn't really have too much of like a dog dog in me. Like I was a competitor. I was really good at defense. I was talented. But when it came to mentality, like I was a little intimidated when I first got here. Bro, I'm 19 years old. I'm 220 pounds. You got guys, the Marcus Cousins, the Dwight Howards, we were talking about going at me every night. I didn't really know how to handle it. But then I had great OGs, bro. I, had, I came in with PG, right? Paul George is someone who I watched him work every single day. Monte Ellis, Rodney Stuckey, CJ Miles, like George Hill. These are all guys that I watch work every day who had that dog in them and they would steal that mentality every single day. So if you don't have the right people around you, of course you're gonna fold. So when we talk about the business, that's when it comes to that business fold. If I'm San Antonio, it's like, okay, we gotta get someone like James Johnson in our locker room who's gonna actually instill that confidence people every day. So, man, I just, it's all about showing love, bro. My OGs actually got me right. The reason I'm, you know, I'm still doing what I'm doing today. Obviously, I put on for myself, but they instilled a mentality in me to keep me here. So you talking you, about play on? You said uh, Tim Duncan didn't have no dog. Yeah, I'm about, yeah, I was waiting. What I was you just mean? Like, huh? No, what you mean? Yeah, yeah, he didn't have it. He didn't. He had fundamental talent. He never exhibited that. Argh. He had a softer demeanor. Yeah, because yeah, 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 but that doesn't mean that you're not a was, dog, though. He was different. He was a different type of dog. It wasn't the dog that we are talking about. We're talking about work out loud. Yeah, we talking about the dog. The dog. What dog you know that is not fucking? <laughs> <laughs> we talking about. We talking about. We talking about, we talking about we talking about what? <laughs> Tough crowd. We talking about that dog on your hat. Yeah, when well, you come dog. around here, it's get the fuck away from me. Get the fuck away from me. Yeah, get the fuck now, away from me. Now, Timmy didn't have. That. Because you, I'm, Timmy he, didn't I'm have scared that. that you're gonna jump in here. So Timmy didn't have that. You ever went to the zoo? You ever been to the zoo with I the kids? I don't go to the zoos. You never been to the zoo no, with the kids? No. All right. <laughs> when you go to the tiger cage, right? The tigers that's up front barking and rah, all them, you know, doing that shit. Mm -mm, those are not the one. This is the one that's just tigers. sitting there not paying attention, lazy. That's that's him. Yeah, but that's the one when he do rah. 
That's when he had to worry about. But when he that was when so he do, Tim never did it. He so, never had to because he was that confident. That's what I'm saying. I'm him. That's what I'm I just first, I'm I said first, that I'm though. All NBA first, but I said first that. team as a rookie. What y'all I said that Tim didn't have to have the rawr. Tim did Tim through no, the you fundamentals. Said he wasn't a dog. Oh, he wasn't like he was that dog. Man. He wasn't that dog. Oh. I didn't say he wasn't the dog. He wasn't that who, dog. Who's the dog? Him or uh, K- KG? KG was the dog, but, but he could not outbark that dog. He couldn't get Tim's dog out. That was no, the reason. T- KG used to always say, "Man, I can't get this nigga <laughs> to <laughs> fucking talk shit or nothing." Because he, he did. Tim was like, "Tim was like, he's a little puppy to me." Tim was more like a gorilla. <laughs> he was like the gorilla. He wasn't more like the dog. He was like. <laughs> I'm going to beat my chest yeah, when I need to. Because I, I have the same demeanor. It's the same shit. I'm chill. As soon as you rile me up and start talking some shit, it's like, what? Then I take my game to a different level. I, you will never see me out there talking shit. Like, nigga, I'm bust your ass. This, that. that ain't me. But if you rile me up, it takes me to a whole different fucking level. Shot starts going in. I start blocking more shots. It just gasses me up. And like I said, you've been around the league long enough. You know, there's certain people you don't poke mm-hmm. and certain people that you're like, all right, no, nah, I'm going to fuck with him. I'm going <laughs> to It don't fucking matter, bro. Once you go out there and actually do you, if you establish yourself, like I like what you're saying about Tim, bro. I think it's so fucking talented, bro. He don't have to be that raw, big bravado. Yep. It's just in him. But no, you no, know no, that. No. That's not what he was saying. Yes, it was what I was no, saying. No, no, That's no, not no, what no, you no, want no, me to no, say. No, you just no, want to have no, something no, to fucking say, like no, all the time, nigga. No. Listen to what I'm saying instead of forming no. your own shit while I'm talking. No, you You're say? like, oh, say is you, you fucking saying? Say? No, no, nigga. That's no, not what I'm saying. I said what I said. Okay, Tim that. Duncan did not have the same type of dog that we all are used to seeing. He was a quiet, I'm doing my own shit, and Tim didn't have to do the barking. He fucking attacked. <laughs> Your ass you know why? Fucking you know why though? Because you know why? Because they because pop. That's what I was saying about Wimby. Wimby, Wimby needs a nigga that's gonna bring a dog out of him. Pop. So you don't, you don't but, think Wimby can have the same demeanor? But then you just say yesterday that 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 um they didn't need pop as on the sideline, right? <laughs> No, I said he could be up top. Right, right, no, right, 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 right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. At my ass, nigga. I said he could do this shit from up top. No, he, no. He could do this shit from up. He don't need to be his old ass sitting there next to him doing that shit. He can that have dog, him in meetings. That, that dog no. needs to be on that sideline. No, side, he don't. On that he up top. That dog, no. He up top. I love it. I'm that dog, up top. No, that dog me, y'all niggas is always trying to make no, a nigga look a certain way. No, y'all never, no, I'm gonna stand on my square, nigga. Cause I win so much with y'all niggas, y'all can't fuck with me. I don't wanna fucking hear it. No, I didn't. That's how you heard it. That's how you heard it. That's how you heard it. Cause y'all both hear the same shit all the time, nigga. What you mean? I heard Tim Duncan wasn't a dog. He's not a dog like that. Like, like what? Like what? Like fucking the KG. Dog. It's like two. Where? It's a fucking like, ball massive. And then there's a motherfucker uh, Doberman pitcher. Then there's a pit bull. Okay, which one is more powerful? Then there's a fucking Labrador. Okay, nigga, there's one? a lot of different fucking dogs. And which one is the more powerful? It don't matter about power, niggas. No matter who's gonna bite you the hardest. No, who's gonna bark the loudest? Who's gonna bite you the hardest? Tim Duncan was the biter. Yes. Labradors yeah, bite just as hard as fucking pit bulls. So KG would have been the barker, and Tim Duncan would have been the Yes. So, so. What is Wimby? Because you don't know. I don't know. We don't know what he Wimby is, is now. A he's a fucking bar. he's a fucking Chihuahua right now. No, no, no he's a fucking Taco Bell dog. What I'm saying is you, you're, you're talking about a, a, a barker. No, I'm, I'm talking about the a dog, barker. the big dogs that we all know are big dogs. Who's, who's a who's bull massive. I say about Wimby, bro. I got like I said, I got a chance to work out for a couple of days. He not that big barker. But when they get in between them lines, it's like, oh shit, this, this thing got some shit. Like, you know, is like, he giving you, you know, any? Is he giving you any of the Tim does he talking a little bit of shit, a, a wink, a smile, anything like bro, that? Bro, you know how the just... four, you know how the foreign niggas get down, bro. It's a, especially France, like they a little bit nicer, but like yeah. that's them the ones that piss you off the most. Cause I'm that same type of person. I'm not a witty comeback ass nigga, but like I'm gonna say some shit that's gonna piss you off, like. Oh shit! Damn, you let me do that to you? Oh shit! Like, that's the type of shit like that you like. Oh, you gassing shit up? You're not saying no witty shit. You're not coming at a nigga's like persona. You just actually talking. You talking your shit. That's gonna piss you off the most. It's like, damn. How's a nigga that build Legos busting my ass right now? Like, that's like nigga build Legos. Yeah. <laughs> you got shit speak about a Lego king. <laughs> the cubics master. The cubic, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just hit your ass with the bop, 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 bop. <laughs> that's how I love being able to move how I move. I can sit how I sit. I can move how I move mm. and roll, roll, roll. But you know when I get in between there, it's going to be a fucking dog fight. It's going to be a fucking battle. I don't got to bark. My game speak for itself. I understand that perception is reality, right? Especially when it comes to our league. People are going to perceive you in any certain type of light. But when it comes to the lines, I don't give a fuck how you perceive me. 
the game is game, and game knows game, as y'all know. Hmm. So what type of dog are you? Bull Massive. A bull I'm massive. both. I'll bite your ass and I'm barking. Hmm. And I'm, yeah. Get, what, yeah what type now? of dog are you? I don't need to bark. No. Why you always barking then, nigga? Josiah, like, what type of dog are you, Josiah? <laughs> I never said. Bark the most. I bark the most. I don't say anybody. I'm, I'm, this, I'm this dog right here. Everybody. I've never said anything on the court. You a lie. Ask somebody. When I hit 60 on Darren Williams, he's seen 60. He ain't have to hear nothing. Gilbert. I'm more of a Nate dog. I talk Nate, after Nate. the game or before the game. Never on the G-fuck, court. G-fuck. They need to. You know what I mean? I'm hurting feelings. What you say you are? Yo, you, you was hitting game dog. winners talking about hibachi. Yeah, he turning around. Huh? You just turning around talking about hibachi. What happened, man? This little, this little, I just, just said raindrops. How was that dude? Yo, that's, that's talking that's shit. That's talking shit. That's talking shit. Gilbert, that's talking shit. Like, 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 shit. like, like I'm not talking to you. Okay. Are you just hibachi? Like, 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 I'm just a hibachi. Talking shit. Don't fire. That's talking shit. Gilbert, that's talking shit. That's not talking shit. Oh, my God. I'm the one. It's witty shit talking. It's yeah, witty. Just it's like piss you off shit talking. Yeah, it's that low. It's that low. Hibachi. Yeah. Like you uh, said yeah. with Jay Will when Jay, you was trying to take the ball. Calm down, young fella. Yeah, yeah calm you're down. You're not going to get that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Shit, yeah, yeah like you're not going to get this one. <laughs> you're not going to yeah, get this one. Yeah, not this time. I got a question. Like, who's some of the best shit talkers y'all done played against? I'm very curious about this. Oh, I came in when that was a hype. Gary Payton, Sam Cassell, Big Mark Jackson, Kevin Garnett. Me, KG, Boston. KG, Boston. Yep, K- KG for sure. I played with tickets, so him and GP, 100%. Was it bothersome, though? Did it ever get to the point where you're so used to hearing it that it was like, oh, I know he's just going to oh, talk shit to me? Well, you know, I'm a shit talker, too. So okay. I, I feel like I was the only nigga that got under KG's fucking skin. Like, I could, I knew what to say. <laughs> I remember I was on the sideline. I was hurt. And Eddie Griffin was busting his ass. Now he's just, get his ass, EG, get his ass. He threw the ball. On. Shut the fuck up. Get your ass on the motherfucking court. You're going to talk some shit. <laughs> and it's like, you know, when you could talk shit, even with GP, if you talk shit to GP, nigga, he on your ass the whole game. He not letting up. It's like, you the mark now. And KG the same nigga. He see it in you, like, I'm on your ass. So for me, I love shit talking. It gave me an edge because now I can poke at a nigga and know that he too sensitive to take what I'm saying. And I can go overboard with it. Exactly. Like you start going overboard like, you don't like me like that? Like, when we get in the back, it's like, niggas want to have that conversation with you. And it's like, yo, mm-hmm. relax, bro. You know what I mean? We just talking shit. For real? Yeah, I've never, no one's ever got under my skin. I, I had the ultra green light. There's, you don't even play like what you... <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even what? G, like when GP got to uh, um, Miami and he got Shaq and all in. You ain't Shaq or D Wade. You go get four, five shots, one for a flat. I'm just gonna ice it. We gonna keep going till you be quiet. I don't gotta pass. I'm saying I ain't gotta pass it to them. Where you gonna keep? All right. Put them on the island. You said a lot. You can break somebody, bro. This game is 85 percent mental, 10 percent skill, and 5 percent luck, bro. You can really break somebody. If you're not securing yourself as a man on that floor, you got some shit going on off the floor, niggas will expose you, bro. Yes. But like when you actually securing yourself just as a person and know who you are and know how fucking nice you are when you get up down the floor, ain't shit nobody can say to you. And that's kind of where I come to my career. Like, you know, my first couple of years, like I said, you come with a little bit of insecurity. You're still trying to make it. But now that I've been in this, I've matured. Like, there ain't shit nobody can tell me, bro. I know what I've created. I know how good I am. And once you know, realize your worth, bro, like, I promise you, bro, you can talk all the shit you want. Nigga, I'm still gonna go out here and give you this 30. Like, it's just, it is what it is. Hey, well, wait, wait, hold on. Rashad, because that's you, right? When you're talking to someone, how long does it take before you actually see, okay, I got him? Shit, it depends. Like, international players, I'm, I'm making fun of your dialect. I'm like, this motherfucker can't even speak English, man. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Fuck him. Uh-huh. And I'm talking to the bench. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to everybody. And then it's like, once you realize that, like, even with Westbrook, I used to be like, why niggas is not talking crazy to Westbrook? Like, I would have this nigga so upset because he's done so much. It's like, you wear the dress, like, you, you controversial outfits. I'm at, I'm at Miles, I'm, everybody gets it, right? And it's like, how far do I go before the nigga be like, hey, that shit don't work, bro. I'm good. <laughs> now it's like, damn, I gotta go with another approach. Now I just gotta let a nigga go, but you can see it in them. When you get under their skin, they start missing shots, they start rushing shit. Then it's like, um, if you can tell a nigga like he a ball hog and 
<laughs> and you can tell, like, he started taking a couple of shots. He's like, oh, this nigga with us. He, he ain't going to pass to nobody. And then you can start seeing little elements. It's like, all right. He can bro, take it's it. fucking energy, bro. When you read people's energy, whether you're on the court or off the court, you read people's energy. You just said it. You can tell when a nigga's like, he's rattled. He's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. You can tell when a nigga like doesn't play much. He's trying to make it. It's like, nigga ain't supposed to be out of here. Get your ass back on the bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a real nigga that can come guard me. Like, bro, you start <laughs> fucking with people. And once that stuff, stuff starts to happen, you take over. You, everybody got the skill, bro. You go out here, it's all about the stage, right? You go out here and you just hoop with your boys on the floor. You show the fuck out. When you get on that stage, there are those who can and those who cannot, bro. You're going to show up or you're not. And then... Like I said, everything's mentality based, bro. That's what I just had to learn in my years in the league. Gil, if I'm you, if I was you, I would have been talking so much fucking shit to everybody. Like, coach, you really gonna bring this bum ass nigga in here to guard me? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with y'all? You should be fired for this because I'm about to cook this nigga. I don't know I, I, because I had NBA blog, right? I had the NBA blog, so I just waited till after, and then just roasted everybody in the. Um, other than that, I just. You don't think what you don't all right, I got one. Y'all don't think what KG said to Melo kind of like that probably kind of like kind of like fucked up his mentality? Yeah, yeah. it definitely did. But you don't know if it's true or not. About, but that's love though. That's different. Wait, how was he playing at that time? Was he playing bad and then he just used it to keep uh, Yes. Okay. Melo uh KG was playing all right, but Melo was hot. Oh, mm -hmm. Melo was Yeah, this was is the hot. Knicks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the Knicks Boston one. So this is when they were good. Like, but like did I think stop him from being hot. Did it actually Oh, wait, Melo got the tech and that kicked out the game? Yeah. Oh, then he did his job. Well, are we talking the name brand cereal story? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so like, it's a very delicious the cereal. It's a very, it's a very delicious cereal. Oh, so you see it everywhere you go. Oh, so he did his thing everywhere you go. But that's what I'm saying. No, but I'm saying, I think, no, but I'm saying, I think that moment right there kind of just like made him like, I, I, I feel like, I feel like it made you insecure because you don't know. Like, 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 like regards, like, like anybody talking about you, like, you know what I'm saying? It's a mental thing now. Now you're like, well, shit, did he? Yeah, yeah, but, or, 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 like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, shit, like, I, when was the time? Freak online, no, like, I get what you're saying. You, you throw spaghetti in the wall, and then you're like, oh, shit, it's stuck. Yeah. I'm, so I'm did y'all have anything yeah. as hoopers? I was just fucking around. I ain't yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, that shit was real. Like, <laughs> it just. Did y'all have anything as hoopers, though, that was like a trigger for you? Like, because we talk about your fan, whatever, but with some, you know, some dudes, it was their mom, whatever it may be. Some dudes, you could say all that shit, and it didn't matter. Was there anything that a dude could talk to you about that could get to you? You don't know until if someone says it because, in, you know, we're all going through our own personal stuff yeah. off the court, right? Like, no one ever says something about you on the court unless someone thinks, like, I should be playing over him. Like, if I notice that you should be playing over him, right? Oh, you easy. Like, damn, you, why you, why you ain't in? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> why you in? He starts doing this. Show <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man, you just gonna like, man, just shoot all these shots. Knowing it's your contract, yeah, you, yeah. Like you usually get a, like the personal. Like if I know it's your contract, yeah, but man, you you up for a contract? They ain't letting you ball out. <laughs> oh boy, you about to. Yeah. You're never gonna understand until you just start saying stuff and it just stick. Yeah, so, yeah. I think for me personally, when I first came in, my first three years, like it was a soft tag. It's like, oh, man, that nigga soft. Like he shoot threes, like. When I first came into the league, that wasn't a thing. It was still that old school ass shit. Like you had your guys like the Dirk Nowitzkis who made their own lane. But when I first came in 2014, 2015, it was like, that's when the, 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 the tides start to shift. You don't have that old school ass five. Those are non-existence. You know, like the, like the Al Jeffersons of the world were kind of becoming obsolete. Like you, you didn't see a lot of people like him. So when people used to tell me like, oh, you soft, that would turn me up. Like, nigga, I'm not soft. But then I think like, damn, I'm not rebounding as hard. Like, I haven't really mixed it up as much. Am I soft? Mm -hmm. But then that's when you have to do some like deep diving and figuring out like who you are as a person. And then now, like, nigga, I know how I'm, I know what I'm about, and people know what I'm about too. So when you get out there and you mix it up, that soft head don't do shit to you because then like I don't care what your perception is. When you get out here and you play, you know what you're gonna get. <laughs> hey, well, hold up though. Now you gotta know the one thing to get under every nigga's skin is a bitch. Mm. That's mm -hmm. and, and bitch I always <laughs> use your bitch. That's my bitch. Mm -hmm. Before she was your bitch. That's, that didn't work. See, that, see, that mean, only worked. That only worked. Secure you yeah. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. you can, but, that's just, just the, it's the oh. trigger point where you can poke at him like, hey, man, um, if that's your trick up there in row oh. three, that's your. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that used to be yours. There's a reason she mm -hmm. told me about you. Oh, I know her name. <laughs> Alyssa, <laughs> it's Alyssa, Alyssa, right. Alyssa, she left. <laughs> so we got that from the program, right? <laughs> when the program, the football movie, he's like, Oh, you fucked my sister. 
Oh, she told me about you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the intimidating part where if you ain't really hip to the fucking culture and know that we just fucking around, like, you get stuck in your mind like, wait, but you fuck my bitch? It seems like NBA dudes date like the same 14 women, though. Like, <laughs> that's, why, that's why I would work. Y'all got to branch out. That's why I would work. It ain't safe out there. <laughs> 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 we know, we know. When. You start trying to branch out, yeah. boy. You been them headlines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's where the insecurity comes. I'm telling y'all, bro. Like, if you're not secure as a man, it's gonna show on that floor. So, like, if you have some insecurities, you feel the need to dig in that same little pond that everybody else is digging in. It's like, oh, I gotta get this bitch because this nigga was fucking with her. Like, yep. Bro, which like, is weird. Which weird. is weird. Dude, which is weird. It's, it's, it's so backwards. <laughs> it's so back. It's so backwards. And it's like dick riding. And it's but like, yo, no, get off my dick. Like, 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 what? You want to know how I move? It's important you know, to get her first. If you, know, you get her uh, first, you know you're good. It's safe. <laughs> it's safe. Because she left him. She didn't blast him. But. Like, Okay, okay, go, 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 shoot. No, it's not that. No, I, no, it's, I think, I think it'd be a... It depends. Like, I've been, like, I go to town, look, back, back, back when I played, back when, back when we played, we go to town, be like, yo, you got something for me? Yes. You got something for me? I cool, need some. Cool, send it through. Yeah. Right, because you know, whatever happens, we are, she's already been vetted. 100%. Already been vetted. But that new one, you'd be like... But there's a beauty in finding out like a woman or whatnot, right? You she go with the diamonds in the rough. You actually figure out a lady and you like boss her up and you build her up. Yeah. There's more beauty in that than like finding a girl that's like already been into this. Already been out here. Yes. Yeah, like, uh -huh, yeah. You yeah, boss her up from she went from McDonald's and now she's used to this this new type of living. Uh -huh. uh -huh. When you drop her, oh yeah, she's crying wolf. Hey, that's she, why, oh yeah, she crying wolf. That's why I be telling these niggas to stop, you know, talking shit to certain niggas that actually got a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Like got we got a lot of pussy. Like Relax, bro. You you still in the league. You got your joint, but all I gotta do is push one little button to get on your motherfucking nerves. Hey, look, that's your wife now. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, leave me alone before yeah, I see, show them text messages. See, that wouldn't bother me. Let me like, show yeah, these text mine. messages. Yeah, you feel different though. I'm like, yeah, she mine now. That's what <laughs> mine now. Yeah, yeah she's mine, mine now. But I know what she. You like, like she used to do the thing with she, the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she got better. <laughs> She got better. She hey, got better. That was that Kanye record. Like, <laughs> who taught you how to do that? Kanye. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> so let's, let's go back to early in your career. Though. Were there any guys that used to get under your skin but helped make you tougher and help build that bro, mentality? Absolutely. There's a couple. So first person to bust my ass, DeMarcus Cousins, bro. Man, and I'm telling you, I came in on a, like a wave. Like, So I missed like. 30 games. I broke my thumb my, my, in my first year. And, you know, it was a blessing in disguise. Got a chance to work on my body. Got a chance to actually learn the NBA and just the schematics and whatnot. So I'm playing against, like, well, I went, it was a West Coast trip, right? I played against Denver, came out there at 25. I'm like, all right, I'm feeling myself a little bit. Then you play against the championship Golden State Warriors. You know, like, I'm talking the prime, like, Steph, Clay, Draymond, like, like Andre Godala, like that, that, like, uh, who was it? Festus Azili, all them dudes, Andrew Bogut. Like, I'm playing against those guys. And I got 31, like in my rookie year. I'm like, all right, now I'm really feeling myself. You go to sack on a back to back the next day. Now I knew about Demarcus Cousins. I knew he was big bully inside, but like I didn't realize he had every fucking thing. Nigga had the handle. Nigga had the shot. It was in there like mixing it up. Nigga was boarding. So I go there. He going crazy, but he he had to have like 45, 50 points. Yamahimi was my OG, right? He he had got fouled out. Lavoy Allen, he had got fouled out. And uh, we had Jordan Hill. He was hurt that game. He was like, Miles, you got to get in there and mix it up. I was going to go to the G League. To this day, I've never played a minute in the G League, like, fortunately. Before that trip, I was literally on my way to Fort Wayne to go play. And it's funny how God works, bro. He works in mysterious ways, you know. Jordan Hill had uh, broke his thumb. Lavoy Allen, you know, um, he, he had, like, a knee problem. And Yamahini's back was messed up. So I was like, you know, Miles, come on. We need you to play. So I had the opportunity to shine and whatnot. But getting in there... Like I said, I'm riding that highway with those two games. I get in there, this nigga's going crazy. Nigga dunking, like shooting threes, hit me. He had hit me one time so hard, I kind of fell on my ass. He was like, you a baby. And I was like, damn, I didn't know what to say back. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I like, when, he, when he hit that, it, it kind of broke, talking about the shit talk, it kind of broke my confidence for a second. It's like, there's nothing I can say. I'm not about to fight this nigga. Like, I don't know what I can say in that, in like opportunity. So I didn't know what to do. Probably finished that game with like 12 points or something like that. And it made me reconsider a lot of shit. Like, all right. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> welcome to, yeah. Welcome to the league. Yeah. Welcome to the league, yeah. 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 Welcome yeah. To the league moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody had that. Mm -hmm. I think mine was, my first welcome to the league moment was, I think Chauncey. Mm. Okay. I think Chauncey Billups, maybe. 
I think Chauncey or, or D Rose maybe. What'd he do? What'd he do? What'd he do? Just got me in that post and was yeah, like, oh, Chauncey, down. They, ooh. Got, got me right in that post early. <laughs> Mine was uh, Gary Payton. Right. And it was to the point where, you know, like, we, you know, we didn't switch back then. Mm. He did a, a one five pick and roll. Switch! I said, I caught switch. So my five man guarding him. You know, this man looked at my five man, posted him. Oh, you think, hey, Rick, watch this. Uh, 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 spent layup. I'm like, oh. Uh, uh. He, kept, <laughs> he kept doing that shit, putting me in the post, doing all that, right? I remember we were sitting at the file. He was like, uh, you lucky I ain't no AI type of nigga. I scored 50 on you in this quarter. He had like 18 straight, though, right? Like, quick four or five minutes. That was the best time. Like, when I heard that, uh, <laughs> deal. <laughs> Ooh, I said, I said, oh, that bitch happy. Like, thank you, Jesus. Hey, I go front. This hey, is embarrassing. I go front. A lot of niggas have had that moment where they like, oh my God, thank God he got me out of here. Yeah, this yeah, nigga's yeah, kicking. Yeah, this nigga's yeah. kicking my ass today. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> that was, hey, man, that was a, like, you know, usually when you get something like, right now? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Ooh. Jeez, hey, go, you go deal with him, boy. I don't want no parts of that man no more. My shit was fucking Richard and Vince in, in New Jersey. Them Richard two, who? Richard Jefferson. They used to give me Jefferson, your boy Richard. Say it again. Richard used to fucking get me in the posting. I used to foul this nigga because his game was so awkward. I didn't, I ain't never like his game. So he used to fucking just used to foul rip this nigga dudes, all the time. Rip dudes. dudes and, but Vince was the main one, though. It wasn't most so Richard. Can I get a cup? Look, I'm not even going. I, need I know you don't like Richard. <laughs> I know you don't like Richard, but. This man Richard, is Richard Jefferson. Richard, my, hey, out of all people. So it wasn't It wasn't like, it was Matt Harper used to give me the okay, blues. Matt, makes sense. Matt used to bully ball and just run run into me. But Vince, Vince was just that nigga that just, just give me a shot, fade man. away, man. all that shit. No, no, I, no, no, no. <laughs> all that shit. You said Vince. I get that. Rick, both, it was both of them because they played the 2-3, so I couldn't switch. They ran the same play. It's like, if I switched on Jet Rich, it's like, uh-uh, running on the other side. And I Richard, could, po- Richard never post up the day. He did. Like, he posted. He wanted to post me. Oh, he was weak. Yeah. He was like, man, I'm going to post this little nigga. <laughs> no, you know what? Just re- Man. See, All the right. gentleman's cut. Cheers, guys. To the Appreciate gentleman's Steph cut. Appreciate Steph Gentleman's cut. Like gentleman's cut, guys. Richard yeah. Jefferson. It's We're not trying to fuck up any bags. I got my face back on that nigga. I got my face back. They like to turn up a tad on the show. I got my face back. All good. I got my face back. That was my rookie year. When we, it was my rookie year, bro. We gonna fight him when we see him. It was my rookie year. So you said, oh, that was rough. It's for gentlemen. Yeah, you gotta be a gentleman about it. I took it like a shot. Thank you. I said, I took it like a gentleman. I mean. You gotta drink it like my niggas on the Titanic. You okay. gonna have it like Jim. Uh, like Jim. Right, for, this Titanic. Shit. for this shit. For this shit. This nigga been coming with the jokes lately. You don't like that shit. I saw right? Titanic the other day. I've been thinking about that submarine and shit too. It's been on my mind. But um, that was the be- hey, that was the best black movie I've ever seen. Best black movie? Yeah, that should be black history. Do so. No black people died that day. Uh, <laughs> was it? Not a bad <laughs> Put up a movie and say, hey, the <laughs> Only movie in movie history where black men don't die. Black Boom. men don't die. Damn. It was one nigga on there with the motherfucking violin Probably or something. Somebody the back there. They was, nope. in, the, they was in the kitchen. The niggas was in the kitchen, the the kitchen, kitchen my nigga. Oh, yeah, that movie's all like, like, yeah, that's, that's a great ass black movie. There was some movie. niggas in the bowels of doing the cold and shit. Somebody Watch, down. Watch, next February, I'm about to promote that. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the league now today. When you look at that center position, you were talking about position, a positionless basketball. It seems like this, the center position has evolved a lot with guys like Joker, guys like yourself. Now you got to be able to step out and shoot that thing. You're shooting 37% for three. So what have you seen from that position since you got in the league uh, in 2015 to now? It's changed a lot, bro. Like, I think that, um, like I said, I was actually like one of the ones that come in and kind of change the position. It was me. It was Chris Hatt for Zingas. It was guys like coming in like us that kind of like made that center position obsolete because you had the slower, bigger guys. They couldn't fucking guard us. Like when I got out there and I saw like a slower, bigger defender, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Like I'm about to get to it. Like I'm confident in my shot. I'm confident in the fact that I get downhill. Now, like I said, everything's positionless. Like when you first came in, you had like that quote unquote dinosaur era. You had your guys like the big owls and whatnot, the guys that can only get like only posted up and knew what their what their lane was. Now, when you have these Euro guys coming in who actually work on everything as a as a kid, who don't just like work on just one position, they work on everything. That's one thing I pride my, you know, my pops in. Like he made me stay after every practice, do all the guard drills, 
do all the shooting drills. And I was like, man, no, I don't need this shit. Like, I'll, I'll get to my right hook, I'll be all right. He says, nah, you're gonna need to do everything. He was the first one who made me actually get back there and do all that stuff. Greg Buckner was, I played for his AAU team coming up. Andre Buckner's little bro, like, they had me like working all that type of stuff after practice. You know, Coach Sean Williams, another dude I, I, I was like really close with coming up, had me work on everything. So when he came into the league, it, it just came, came natural to you, it came easy. Like I knew people couldn't stay in front of me or guard me. I was quicker in my position, I was faster. I was, was like, I wasn't that strong, but I was able to like to get to wherever I needed to get to. And that made you an asset, right? Like I said, this is business, right? You wanna be the asset to any like team or community that you're into. You know, you can't be a liability on defense. You mm-hmm. can't be a liability on the offensive end. You got to be able to do everything. Even guards now. Guards, you got to be able to post up. Do you think it's unfair that NBA made it positionless? Because what ends up happening now, ever since they made that rule where the center is not a position in the All-Star game, moving forward, all centers, no matter what your numbers are, you get diluted to the pass. So... Now you're going against Kareem where he has 17 all-star appearances, mm-hmm. right? There's no, there's no center moving forward that would allow that. You can't have that anymore because you're not going against the centers like you too, like, right? So if you're going to say, all right, who's, who's the center in the East? Well, you have uh, Embiid, Bam. Bam and you, mm-hmm. right? Between you three, y'all are going to be all-stars. Some years, all three of you be all-stars. Every year, it's just you three. Now you have to compete with all forwards too. Yeah, I ran into that problem. Mm, so that takes away, ago. yeah, that takes away damn near automatic votes that you guys would have had to build your resume. So you've been in there nine years, haven't made the All Star when you could have been a five time, six time All Star by now. Absolutely, which changes, <laughs> which changes everyone's career when you just try to go against the past now. Yeah, and like we talked about the perception of things, right? Y'all are guards. That's what sells, and everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. Guards get out there and get to it, they got the handle, they get everybody involved. That's what people wanna see. Not everybody's gonna grow up to be seven foot fucking tall. Mm-hmm. Like, not everybody's gonna like, inspire to that, but you see guys like undersized, like Brandon Jennings himself come in, score 55 and shit in the debut. Like, mm-hmm. that's what guys like look at and whatnot. They see that, it's like, oh shit, I can do that. Yeah. Whereas you're seven foot, it's like, oh shit, I know I'm not gonna grow, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do what he's able to do. So, I get it from a perspective of like marketing and whatnot, because you have to understand the game and then the game. You know what I mean? So you can you sit here and be like, I should have been an all-star, man. These niggas ain't give me my respect. Da, 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 da. You can sit there and do that, or you can understand what you're up against. And that's kind of what I learned a couple of years ago. Would it be nice to be an all-star? Would it be nice to get the accolades? Of course. But it's not gonna make or break my career, you know? Yeah, yeah. Me negotiating, I'm a six-time all-star versus, you know. It's different. It's different. Like, like knowing I'm, your worth, though. Knowing your worth. Them front office niggas, if you come in there and know your worth and know what you can provide and ain't know what you can provide, yeah. But I do understand the accolade part of it. Like it, just, it just seems like I th- it was the, it was, I know who scared him. Petrulia. Zaza. Yeah. Isn't, Zaza. That's what changed it, right? When he almost became a starter. And the All-Star oh, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, when they had, oh, yeah. they had that good yeah. starter. Yeah. They, they number freaked one the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. they freaked the fuck out. Like, wait, hold on, no, 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 no. And then the next year they change it, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that like bullshit. Yep, Georgia. Well, like, Georgia. I hate when they like, China. Yeah. But that's the shit that kind of like irritates me. Like, when you're talking about the purity of the game, and and I'm I was in the era where I seen it firsthand. Right? They tried to put that ball in, which I loved. I hate. I'm not gonna. That. I love that. Fuck with my fingers, man. Right. <laughs> you was that cooking ball. in that ball. Yeah, that ball. That was cooking in that ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when they tried to use the ball, the real reason that the ball didn't last wasn't because of what it was doing to our hands. It was because Kobe did not like the idea of having an advantage over the past. He said, if the past played in leather, I want to break their records in leather. Do not give me an advantage. So, so he, they started making excuses. Steve Nash, like, he, he's right. Like, I don't want to break somebody's record because the pass is now these guys get to shoot better. Like, no, I want, oh, it's messing up my fingers, cutting my finger. And that's where the excuses came from because the, the generation was like, don't give us in the fucking an advantage. We want it authentic. They, they played in leather. We want to play in leather. Right. And I think it's the same way for the all stars. If I'm a, if I'm, you know, Shaquille or something and I'm like, I'm going to be saying, yo, this is fucked up, right? We were 
I made the all-star game, even though I'm dominant. It was just two of us battling each other, three of us battling each other. So I was going to win that all-star vote. And that's why I'm a 12, 15 time all-star. You're taking an advantage of these kids now. Like put them in a lane like it was created. It was created a certain way. Keep it the same. Do not start changing the rules that actually hurts groups. Like the centers are, the, I don't give a shit like why, especially if it's a positionless game, right? You're not going to get the same opportunities as Shaq did. Right. Right? But if you're still an all-star, if you're still a top three center, you should be rewarded that. Why should I have to go against a guy like Greek the Freak? He, we're not in the same lane. Nah. Right? I'm not in the same lane as him, so I, that ain't my position. Right? I'm a point guard. AI's the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Who I going against? Where my all-star vote at? You know what I mean? That's really... Like the really the thing, and I just think it's unfair. I just think that's unfair. It's the criteria, bro, because you think about like even like the MVP. Like there was a huge debate last year between Jokic and Embiid. Mm -hmm. What's the criteria? Nobody knows the criteria. You have media that's voting on it. You have guys that have never played in the NBA, never laced up these shoes, voting on who an All Star is. Mm -hmm. I mean, my personal opinion is that should be up to the players, the coaches, the people that are in the know. But when you market something a certain way, the media is like, "Oh shit, like, that, that's the guy right there." You, you ain't really watching play every single night. Right. You watch a couple highlight tapes. Right. You watch some shit on ESPN, some Sports Center, but you won't really know what it's like to guard a Jokic. You don't know what it's really like to guard an MB. So when you come up with that criteria, who knows what it's based off of? Mm -hmm. And that's not for us to decide and whatnot. As far as players are concerned, it's, it's, it's the outsiders. Let me ask you this: as far as dominating perspective, we had this conversation about Joker in the finals versus Shaq in the finals and dominating, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So you a center. What would you consider dominating as a center? Would the dunking like Dwight Howard and Shaq being able to just dunk on your ass every possession, right? Mm -hmm. Compared to a Jokic, which is going to use more of his assists. He's going to shoot more threes and jumpers. He ain't doing no dunking on you. He ain't really uh, making you foul out of the game, but he's dominating the game statistically in so many mm -hmm. areas that when they do win, it's like, yo, he he was just completely dominant over everybody. What's the the biggest advantage between the two elements? It's very subjective. I mean, I like I told you, like the way my mind is built, I'm more of a fan of the art, right? The art of the game. When Jokic goes out there, he's like literally painting himself on that canvas. He's doing every fucking thing. He's getting people involved. He does not have to score to actually like have an emphasis on that game. He can literally go out there and just piss you off because now you're starting to get pissed off at your teammates. What the fuck? Stop letting this nigga back door. What the fuck? Right there? Like, like, stay attached. Stay attached. Like, that can fuck with you a little bit more. Now, if a guy's just coming at you and just dominating, like a Shaq type presence, a Joel Embiid type presence, is dunking, that might do a little bit something to your to your uh, your mentality. But you also know you have your team. The team has your back. If this nigga's in the post, it's like, okay, we can just double him real quick. You can't double Jokic. As soon as you double him, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, you're just going to go to the next, like, guard. So, it's an interesting perspective. I would say Jokic would piss me off a little bit more because... Now I'm looking at my team like, guys, come come on. Mm -hmm. Whereas in beat, I have a fighting chance of actually being able to guard him one on one. So, you know, as as well as he might get you in foul trouble and shit like that, you're gonna get a couple stops here and there. With who? Well, with, 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 with the beat. With no with Shaq. Shaq, 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 Shaq. Beat, Shaq types, you're gonna get a stop here and there. With Jokic, you have to really like come together. You know, you, you get a foul, you come together the free throw line. It's like, guys, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, you know, you it pisses you off a little bit more because you can't control it. And B, you can control a little more. Jokic is like there's stuff that's out of your control. And when he wants to go score, it's like, fuck it, he'll shoot some fall away ass shit. And it's like, ah, this nigga right here, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, he makes sense. Like, imagine you playing great ass defense on me, like, mm -hmm. right? And then, boom, I throw an assist and someone scores. I did my you job. You mad at, but you mad exactly. at them. Like, oh, right, damn. That's my job. Team chemistry like, as opposed to just you. Like Westbrook 20, 20, and 20, right? Or 20, 21, and 20. Nobody talks about he was eight for like 27, eight for 28. He was, he was locked up, but them 20 assists. <laughs> Nasty. Right? You, you, yeah. you, them 20 assists made it look like whoever's guarding him, he's like, man, I, I locked this nigga up today. 28 shots, only 20 points. But that stat line, that stat line of them 20 assists makes it look like he didn't do his job. He's really, so he's yelling at his teammates, like, yo, points, why y'all couldn't stay, in, stay with y'all mans? Because he really got 40 50 because of the 20 assists. Like, he yeah. really got 40 50 on y'all. That happened in his earliest year. We played Jokic early in Indiana. He only had like 15, 16 points, but then he had 
20 assists, and he had like 22 rebounds, something like that. So I'm feeling good about myself. Yeah, I locked this nigga up. And it's like, wait a second. You look at the stats, he's like, damn, this nigga did what? <laughs> triple <laughs> double on that. Triple double, <laughs> damn. triple double, wait, 20 what? 20. <laughs> what? You start looking at your teammates like, man, that's what we own, huh? That's what we own. So you're saying home. Jokic was better, uh, more dominant than uh, Shaq? No, I'm not saying no, that. No, no, no. He's saying dominant. No, he's saying dominant. He's talking about like. You know what I said. You know he's on Shaq. You know what I said. He's on Jokic. Everybody and everybody in America know what I said. And they say the same shit I said. Yeah, when he just confirmed what we said. Yeah, but I asked his perspective. He don't mean I got to agree with it. Hey. You, you, guard Shaq. <laughs> you, you guard and Shaq. You're you guarding Shaq. You're guarding Shaq. Listen, listen, I played with Shaq. I mean, played against Shaq. So trust me, I know when. Who is this little baby pal? Yeah. Boom, <laughs> yeah, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Oh, this so but like I, this man was calling players bums. Oh, he's a walking bump. <laughs> he ain't got no money. He ain't got no game. <laughs> to this day. To Yo, this hey, day, are you, hey, we were sitting there like, yeah. He ain't got no money. He, he ain't got, got no game. He ain't got no money. He ain't got no game. He's a bum. Hey, like, barbecue man. chicken, man. Hey, I'm glad I'm a guard. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue chicken. So let's talk about you a little bit more. During the season, you and the Pacers agreed to a two-year contract extension, which included the largest salary renegotiating bump in NBA history. I think it was two-year 60 mil, but they added, and I don't like to get in the pockets, but but with like 17 or 18 onto your contract this season. And then you got two more for 40 base or something around that after, after this. But uh, let's go back a few years ago. You kind of felt like you didn't have a big enough role with the team. Do you feel differently now? And what does it mean to you to be able to get that commitment from the squad for these next few years moving forward? Well, first and foremost, it's all love. You know, I got to give a big shout out to Herb Simon. Like he's someone that I think has been rocking me for a long time. Um, I've been blessed and fortunate to be with the same organization that drafted me my entire career. It's very rare. You know, I spent six out of my eight years in trade rumors and whatnot, and just, you know, hearing my names in headlines every year, and that can really break a player. Mm -hmm. And so you realize, like I said, the game and what comes with everything that you are, you know? So for me, playing out of position, I think it may, it may have held me back, handicapped me a bit. You know, you from averaging 13 points, you could have averaged 18 to 20 points over the past four or five years, but you're also able to learn about a different position. So by learning about this four position, I know how to guard this four position now. It also makes you more of an asset. So I could have like took the, um, I guess, negative approach of it and like, oh man, these niggas fucked me over, this is that. Nah, I never took it as that. I took it as, all right, you know what? Patience, I'm waiting my turn. Y'all want me to play the four? Fuck it, I'll play the four. But when I get my turn, I'm gonna show the fuck out and never look back. And that's kind of where I'm at in my career now. I'm able to actually go out here and just do what's natural to me. So, um, could you say I took a little bit of a pay cut? Yeah, but the experience and what I learned was priceless. And I can't put a price on, you know, being able to actually go out there and play multiple positions now and just learn how I'm able to move. So I took the personal approach. You know what I mean? It's very easy to sit out here and sit with your boys and like, oh man, oh man, I should have got a hundred mil, this, this and that, but nah, bro, it's patience, bro. Wait your turn. And when you get your opportunity, don't look the fuck back. Fuck with that. Mm -hmm. so team, team also re-signed Tyrese Halliburton. Mm -hmm. What does Tyrese meant to you just playing on that squad? And how has he helped your game with the Pacers? A true fucking artist, bro. A true point guard. That is someone right there that... I played with some great guards in this league. The George Hills, the Jeff T's, the Darren Collison's, like I, Michael Brogdon's. Like I played with guys, but never just a pure-ass point guard. Tyrese, wanna, he want to pass before he wants to actually score. You know what I mean? And he's obviously, he reads the defenses very well. So whenever he's getting downhill... Whenever he does these look way passes, I know what's coming. Mm -hmm. And that's just the synergy of getting to actually get to play with them. You know, my first year, I was hurt. I didn't actually get the chance to play with them. Last year's my first year actually being able to build that synergy with them. He got a little bit hurt, like, you know, through the middle of the year and whatnot. But, you know, with us actually spending time together and knowing, you know, how he gets to move, it's been beautiful. And I just love the fact that niggas popping his shit, bro. Yes. The Wally Serviak dude really turned him up last year. And I don't think you understood, like, Oh, Wally? Oh, Wally turned his ass. You ain't hear what Wally said? No, no, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That nah. shit was some fucked up even, shit. I was like, even Wally, Tyrese, bro, hater, like, man. like, he's a soft demeanor kind of guy, but he got a fucking dog in him. And that's what people don't realize about him. They see the light skinned nigga, they see the Midwest ass kid, and this is that, the good smile. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> that's how they do it. You can't wait. You can't wait. Yeah, yeah, that's what I fuck with, 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 with Tyrese, bro. When he get out there, he gonna show the fuck out. He makes that shit look so easy. You know? I, see, I seen him uh, when he was coming to the draft. I was I was here in Vegas at uh, Impact. Impact, yeah, I worked I, out with him. Oh yeah, yeah. I, oh, I was at I was at Impact and um, uh, Steve Kerr was there watching, and I'm just looking at how he plays, and I was like, okay, he's a pro. Like, I don't know, I ain't know nothing about him, and I'm just just 
his mannerisms on how he's moving. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, we spoke a little bit and I said, man, the way you moving, the way you playing, what you're looking at. And I said, you know, um, the way you shoot, learn, get a pump fake with it. Mm-hmm. You get a pump fake oh, with that he shot. That, he got that side step. Yeah, down, yeah, down. yeah. I said, <laughs> you, hey, is that, I said, because a great pump fake always keeps the, you know, uh, defense off balance. Yep. And, you know, from there, just watching him play, I'm like, I, I, I seen it like you like he's going into work on us. Me and Steve Kerr was just sitting there talking. I'm like, he got it. One of the ones. He got it when he when you put him with five players. Oh man, I actually had the opportunity to guard him in the workouts because Joe used to bring me up when I was living out here. Joe Bunasar. Joe Bunasar. I did my pre draft there too. Big love to Joe. Yeah, man. Joe's <laughs> a big man. He's a big workout guy. So he brought me in. He's like, shot. I need you to to play defense on these guys when they're doing their workouts. So uh, I had seen him a little bit at Iowa State. But I didn't get to analyze his game until I actually guarded him. I'm like, okay. He reminded me a lot of Kmart, uh, Kevin Martin from mm-hmm. Sacramento. Yeah. And his okay. just his yeah. shot, you know what I'm saying? And but his like Gil said, he's smart. He knew how to get his shit off. And for me, I wanted to bully him a lot. I wanted to show him this is the league. All that shit you think is good is not gonna be good. So I'm bumping him off his spot, all these things. So he was able to come to me, he was like, Hey bro, I appreciate you, you know, making me play harder. Because mm-hmm. they're not used to playing hard coming out of college. At and all. it's like, this NBA, bro, that shit ain't where I'm blocking this shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, all, I'm all on him. But then when he got to the league, he was a sack and he was working with Rico. Mm-hmm. And, and him and Rico came over. He and, and, and Tyrese came up to me and was like, yo, I remember everything you was telling me. And I was just like, and then Rico came over and was like, you been working with y'all, Phillip? I was like, yeah, I know. He's like, he going to be the one. He's going to be the one. So when he got that 260, I was like, yo, this kid is about to turn the corner. Yeah. And then he out there with you. So now it's a two-headed monster where you guys can really flourish this next coming year. Mm-hmm. And both probably, I think, have a chance to be all-stars. Absolutely, bro. All-star game on the Indianapolis next year. And I think they feel like the stars are aligning, bro. You already know. <laughs> so last question for you. You know, you're coming off a career season, you know, points, rebounds, out there really doing it. What's the next leap for you in your career as a player? Um, you know, I kind of finally took the approach of kind of what we were talking about earlier. The accolades don't really mean too much to me. It'd be nice to, you know, get an all-star, you know, to actually get a defensive player of the year, all defensive. But, like, for me personally, bro, it's just becoming an OG, bro. Like, I'm finally stepping into my years. I'm going on my ninth year now. <laughs> bro, like, no, you're I'm, not an OG, I'm, bro. Right <laughs> 27, bro. You're coming a young, a young OG. A young OG. You're coming a young OG. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta remember, the, the, everyone's we so gotta remember. young. Everyone's so young. He's an OG. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He is an OG. He is At OG. 27, man. I'm so immature still, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Look, we just seen um, T- Tillman that yesterday. He's 24. 24. 24. Like, but like, the thing family, is, you got yeah. three kids, wife. I got guys coming to the locker room and I'm playing my music and shit. Like, I'm putting on Lenny Kravitz. Like, who's Lenny Kravitz? I'm like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Like, I'm putting on like DMC, uh, run DMC. Like, wait, who's that? Guys that are born in the 2000s, it's fucking me up. Yeah. And I'm like, yo. So, born in the 2000s. Get back to my original point, bro. Just becoming like, I had a lot of OGs that looked out for me when I first got to the league. I wanna be that for like the younger players and whatnot. Like, show them the blueprint. Like, bro, get your fucking money, bro. In the day, you have your talent, you have your skill, get your fucking money. So, when it comes to on the floor, it dominated myself more in the defensive prowess. That's something that's more that's like a, I guess, a big, like, I guess goal of mine is just becoming assert myself more, like become one of those more feared guys. Because we talked about it. You said when you see like a, a so and so, you don't really fear him. I want to make sure that like when you come to, when you come to actually play against me tonight, you know what it is. Off the floor, bro, getting my young boys right. You know, like I said, just I want to make sure everybody gets their money. That's a big goal of mine. You know, I, I actually like this uh, this new era. Because <laughs> everyone we talk to, man, they always thinking about the the, the, the teammates talking about, you know, like helping this person, the vets really helping. But but I think be, because now the age is so close, right? The You know, because he's a vet at 27, then you have a, you know, vet yesterday at 24, mm-hmm. right? Um, because they're all learning together, whoever the oldest one is, out of learn, he takes on that fathery role. Yep. Yeah. Versus, you know, we coming at 19, everybody on the team is 28, 30. 30. Yeah, 30. 30 for sure. Like, 30. And they looking at you like, 
This young nigga. Yeah, you about to take my spot, yeah. man. And they yeah. don't want to teach you shit. It was on the hater that's, shit. Yeah, they it was, was on the hater shit. That's like what it is. It's hating shit, bro. Like, I can never actually look at young boy coming in and hate on him. It's like, all right, shit, I was there before. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to fucking make it. I was trying to come in here and like create my own lane. But once you actually create your own lane for yourself and you're in it, it's like, why would I hate this younger generation? That's something that's like something I take a lot of pride in, bro. I spoke to y'all a little bit earlier about that. Bro, we're out here in Vegas. You see a bunch of OGs walking around. Most young boys is like ducking y'all. They ain't even gonna say what's up to y'all. Bro, that ain't right, but y'all done paved the way for us, right? So why would I not come up and show love? Why would I not come up and be like, oh, geez, yeah, I fuck with you, bro. Like, I appreciate everything you've done for the game because that's what this shit's about, bro. At the end of the day, if you don't come out here and actually show love to the people that paid the way for you, bro, <laughs> karma, right? I'm a big believer in karma. If you don't get that good energy out, you're not going to get that good energy back. So that's kind of yeah. like the type of like I mean, I guess right it's no, no different than us. I guess when young, younger players see the older ones, we just – they assume that we don't like them, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? We just assume, so they'd rather just keep their head down. But, you know, the generation that's about, what, 40, about, like from Shaq down, mm-hmm. there's really no hate because they actually got the bread, mm-hmm. right? You know, if you if you talk about the, the 90s through the 80s, they don't like the new generation because they didn't make that money, yeah. right? So they're looking at it. I got the same stats, you know, they got 300 million, mm-hmm. right? So I always have to remind somebody, it's all, I do this, it's our 16 million, right? His, yeah. his 40 is our 20. Yeah. His 10 is our five, so yeah. relax. Yeah, 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 relax. yeah, 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 yeah. Because right? yeah. I heard Barkley say his first, what, Barkley was a top 10 pick? He made 200, 400,000. Now imagine they're not hating. They're not hating the stats. They're hating the bag. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just like when they walk by, you know, we don't want to talk to them niggas because you know, like, oh, this motherfucker, <laughs> about, this motherfucker <laughs> about to hate. I just saw that one twenty. Like now imagine a, a generation. But it's you talk all, to a, you talk to a sixties and seventies. Yeah. It's all paying homage. We we know what the word pay homage means. These you, these young niggas don't know what paying homage is. And I had to learn that when I got in the league um, through some of the uh, OG alumni from Carolina, because our Carolina alumni is deep, right? So if I walk, if I'm running, warming up in warm ups, and I walk by a couple guys, I don't say shit. And, hey, young fella, check in. Check in, check bro. In. You don't just walk by us. You say what's up. And I used to be like, man, it ain't, ain't, ain't trippy. He's like, nah, you gotta pay homage. And, I, I, and it stuck with me. So every NBA guy that I seen. I pay homage to say mm. what's up. I gotta say what's up because now <laughs> you look you look different when yeah. they see you and they like this nigga's a prima donna. This nigga think da 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 da. And I never got the money that Gil or you, or you niggas got. So for me, it, it was more important because you don't want to burn those bridges when you need them down the line. And these niggas is already solidified like the Shacks and 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 the AIs and, and the Chaunceys and all of them. It's like if you ain't pay homage and you see them niggas out, they head coaches now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, they For can offices. get you a job, yeah, right? And so this young, like, Cole Anthony, Carolina guy, he would walk past me like I didn't, like I'm not number two at Carolina all time. <laughs> <laughs> number two, right? So it, it wasn't that I got mad at him for not knowing. It was just that the arrogance of him not thinking that he has to say anything. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro. So he, you, he was you. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I like, when a nigga told me I needed to pay homage, it changed everything for me. But you know, for the most part, just to be honest, even with us, right? How much did we study our past? Not a lot. I'm not a lot. So not a know, lot. some of these I guys, did. some of these guys we really don't know unless you respect. There's an era like we had TV, right? So, you know, for us to know people, we actually had to watch the game. Right? So we're what they don't have to watch the game. Now, it's just more highlights and stuff. So it's not like they sit there and watch and, okay, that's Rodney. And we're, we're really learning basketball cards. We got the, we had, we had things that actually helped us yep. know the past. Yep. For the most part, like if a, a early 80s or a 70s guy came up to me, I wouldn't know who he is. I'll know his name and his stats, but I wouldn't know right. what he is. One, you know I mean, he's, it's 2023, nigga probably 70, 68, right? right. <laughs> Old as fuck, right? He'd be like, I don't know, probably gained 67 pounds. You know what I mean? You don't really know the guy 
as you should. You know what I mean? So you got to give some of the, the younger kids, like, I know he's a player, but I don't know who he is. So I'd rather just not say nothing versus fucking it up. But they not I just be like, the game, though. These new kids, I'm like, oh, what's up, young fella? Keep going. Keep it up. <laughs> but think about this. You though, look like a hooper. <laughs> if, if, if you don't, if you're not solidifying the podcast game, right? It's hard for these niggas to know no chill Gill if they not looking up highlights and shit, mm -hmm. right? So you've been able to be relevant because you stay in the light and they're like, okay, this nigga Gilbert was a monster and everyone's solidifying that around because when your name come up, it's like, go look at them highlights. But if you a nigga that don't actually study the game and the history of it, you won't know who Anthony Hardaway is unless mm -hmm. it's brought up with mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you don't know Grant Hill? No, 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 no. You did no, you did ask the man. I, we did a podcast. He's on our podcast list. You 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 know him. You remember we was talking to a kid who was coming to the draft, coming to the draft, lottery. And we mentioned uh Vince Carter. He knows the name. Yeah, Vince Carter. But like, how you like his game? He's he's what he might be it was this he was 20 then. He was like, I don't know nothing about no Vince Carter. <laughs> I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You don't know nothing about Vince Carter. He was like, no. What was wow. this, two years ago? I mean, I can see it. I mean, I can see that. I mean, I think about it like, I mean, yeah, Vince's been since 2000. Yeah, what were you at? 2007. It's like I was in middle school. Mm, he wasn't paying attention. I mean, guys like, just got, I mean, guys just got their favorites. I mean, I'm not paying homage to everybody that mm. played basketball. Like, I don't care who you are. Like if I don't like you, um, <laughs> oh, like no, nah, for real. Like I, don't, I walk, I walk past a lot of niggas. Like I don't care. Like I gotta like you. Like I gotta like you. I gotta know, like you had to do something for me when I was younger to yeah, yeah, just yeah. pay homage. Like that's just what it is. Man, some of these motherfuckers, like I man, I ain't gonna lie. The eighties and the seventies, man, these motherfuckers rude. Yeah, they was rude. Yeah. Like, oh y'all couldn't play in our era, and I'm like, bro, I would have bust your ass. But like, that's why I be poking them motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All the shit they used to say, like, oh, he, you know, it's ball hall. He didn't do this. Like, man, I, man, try to guard me. I look oh, guys fuck like Paul. Try to enhance chick bro. shit on me, bro. <laughs> fuck you up, bro. I came in the league with PG, right? <laughs> and now you see these younger niggas like I saw Brandon Miller the other day or two other guys or uh, Carmelo Anthony's son was like, yo, PG's my goat, bro. It's all reference point and generational yep. shit. So mm -hmm. guys see people like him and it's like, oh shit, nigga, that's Paul George. Like, he that nigga, this, this, and that. Whereas OGs might look at me like, oh yeah, that's Paul George. Yeah, it's reference. You're right. Point, you're, right. Mm -hmm. you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah, but, they, but niggas look. Yeah. Niggas will look at me and be like, that nigga's a bum. He ain't never did nothing because it goes straight to the stats. And if your stats don't show up to what you're talking about, niggas just think you da 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 da. Right. But what these niggas don't know is, I'll break your fucking back right now. Thirty eight. Put me on the court with your young ass right now. They call me the dream killer. I'll have your ass back the in that motherfucking lab. <laughs> hey, back in the fucking lab, thinking about your fucking game. Like, yo, he was on top of my shit. Like, I never knew a nigga can block my shit that many times. Steal the ball from me. Post me up. My chest is still hurting because this nigga is so strong. All this type of shit. So it's like, I don't want to break you niggas' confidences down, but it's, it, it, is a, it is a respect level for niggas you respect, don't know. Bro. You don't yeah, know bro. certain niggas that can hoop. Like a Jamal Mashburn, a Jim Jackson, niggas that could hoop back in the- Flip Murray. Flip yeah. fucking Murray, my nigga Flip, right? Did you have to guard him? Yes. Nigga Flip with Where? Seattle. No, you wasn't, oh, so you wasn't in league when this happened, right? <laughs> Ray Allen was out. Ray Allen was out, right? And um, Lewis and random ass Ronald Murray comes in. Who's dude? Ah, 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 ah. Throw it off the backboard, dunk like, wait, who, the, who is this? He was the only player in the league. It was like the first 10 games of the 20 points plus. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, who Shaw is University. this? Shaw University. He was for sure all-star. And then everybody came back right, and they, and they, they put him. Put him oh. I was all oh, like, I ain't got a guard on no more. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're talking about someone who was nice as hell, mm -hmm. that was shelf. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That man, but like, like he think, was hard. Think about how much the game has changed, bro. Like from my era, we have social media and whatnot, right? I came up on like ball is life, you mm. know, and like, <laughs> yeah. like who yeah. makes tapes. So you make <laughs> so you bro. See like yeah. you start seeing these people, and you start seeing these people at a young age. So now you know who they are. They come into it with so much hype. You got niggas coming in with three million followers at 15 years old. <laughs> yeah, like, that shit is different, bro. For me personally, when I first came to the league, uh, I played a little bit of four. Yeah, Yamahimni was 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 the five. I was a four. You're playing 2K and stuff like that. Man, this nigga sucks, bro. This nigga can't fucking move. This is that. 
Then you get to guard these niggas at training camp. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> Marvin Williams, another one, bro, was the first one to bust my uh, like bust my ass a little bit too. I was at the floor. He's one of the niggas used to slip, right? Yep. You go up and just slip, go like a little ghost screen. And I'm like, I would come up there, like, shit, like like, and then I get subbed the fuck out because I didn't know how to guard it. So it's guys like, man, Marvin Williams, what the fuck is Marvin? Then you get to the league, it's like, oh shit. Right? Yeah. Like yep. shit gets yep. different. Yeah, yeah it gets so you, start, real quick. Yeah, you start seeing some real hoopers that's <laughs> not known. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah, me. what made you get into fashion? What do you love about fashion? Bro, like okay, so I've always had an eye. I've always like I've like, considered myself an artist, but I didn't know brands. Yeah. I didn't know the names of brands, stuff like that. I didn't know the industry. So me and my little my baby sister's a she's a model, right? She's 20 years old, she's starting to get into this game. And she used to really gas me up, like, yo, Miles, put this fit with this. This shit will go crazy. And we started to used to work together to create some stuff and create our own lane. So uh, we went to our first fashion week you know, a little while ago, yeah. or, or two weeks ago in Milan. Yeah. I didn't get to the Paris when I got to Milan. And that was for the Players Association. And I was one of the dudes who used to look at the Players Association. It's like, man, why, why the fuck would I spend my summer with the Players Association? I'm going to go turn up. I'm going to go with my boys. But nah, bro, it's about branding and whatnot, right? So now... When I get out to Milan and I actually step in these rooms, you're meeting the Giorgio Armani's, you're meeting all these dudes behind like all these brands. It's like, oh shit, hold on. Bro, it doesn't matter if you're a bench player or a starter, like, or a star player. Brands wanna work with you because you're attached to the entity of the NBA. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are. So me realizing that, it made me start having an eye for stuff. One thing I've always prided myself in, I don't have a stylist. I have people that I've worked with, I have personal shoppers, but I have an eye for this shit. I love details. I love looking at pieces like, okay, this brace right here is gonna make is gonna match my shoes. This uh this piece right here is gonna come up with a the color. These glasses right here are gonna match gonna match like the green I got. Like I got an eye for all this type of stuff and I like just create, bro. Like I'm a creator at the end of the day. And there's such a negative connotation when it comes to fashion, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, oh, this nigga's playing dress up. Yeah. Oh, this nigga's this, this, and that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. And once you learn to kind of uh like I said before, be securing yourself as a man and be secure in what you got, going out to the crate and creating a new lane. Now, brands are looking at, oh shit, who's Miles Turner's sister? Oh my God, she's beautiful. She can come work for our brand. Bro, putting your people on. So when you actually start to go out there and work with these certain people, they start to look at the people around you. It's like, oh wait, shit, this nigga fire. This nigga putting that shit on. I could put him in this brand. I could put him with this, uh, this catalog and whatnot. So just learning about opportunities really got me into fashion and it's fun, bro. I like actually looking at pieces and like styling people. I like styling women. I like styling myself. Like it's just, it's fun for me, bro. That's dope, that's dope. Dude, you plan on starting a brand? Eventually, bro. I got a little bit of a smaller brand right now, but one of the biggest things I learned in Milan is like not starting your own brand is partnering with people, partnering with other corporations, other brands, because it's hard like to cover manufacturing costs and like actually start getting your shit off the ground where as opposed to working with established brands and just putting your name and attaching it to it. You're in the fucking NBA, you're an athlete. At the end of the day, these brands wanna come in and tap in with the market that you're in. Athletes are cool, you're hip, you're young, like that's what they wanna see, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day, exactly. They wanna see a little bit of that in their brands as well in inclusion, it sells. Man, I gotta say like, when I came into the league, 06, my first thing that I thought about as soon as I left Carolina was branding mm -hmm. and literally, I started my own clothing line, Young, Black, and Gifted, YBG. And everybody was, I'm not gonna say everybody, but in Minnesota, they was kind of upset because mm -hmm. I wasn't worried about wearing nobody else's shit. My shit was custom. I would show right. up with my jackets on and t-shirts and all that shit. And I had a couple guys, you know, hey man, where you get this from? Where you get that from? And I felt like it was important to have an identity, mm -hmm. your own identity, identity inside yeah. the league, right? So for me, it was like, all right, if I got my own shit, I don't really have to sell it to other people because I like what I like. I like yes, what bro. I like. So if niggas bro. don't like what I got on, like it's like a, a lot of motherfuckers get triggered because it's like, oh, my Kansas fits is this and that. And it's like, I don't give a fuck about what you think Talk about my shit, fit. Bro, like yeah. I wear what I like. <laughs> I wear what I like. Like you don't got to go buy my shit. It ain't up there yet. Right? So if you like my shit, buy my shit. If you don't like my shit, shut the fuck up. Please, bro. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Hate comes within our own culture, bro. In our own in culture. Our own culture. <laughs> and that's what, bro, like just certain things. Like I like like colors. I like being expressive or whatnot. So if I wear my pinks and whatnot, my pastels, people are looking like, oh man, this, this nigga is such and such. You know what I mean? And that can either make you or it can break you. And for a lot of people, it's like, oh, I'm scared about what he's going to see on me on the internet. Like, nah, bro, I don't give a fuck about what you think about me. Nigga, at the end of the day, nigga, I'm a man. <laughs> I'm secure in my sexuality. I'm good at what the fuck I do. And I'm a creator, bro. And 
I'm going to keep popping my shit. That's what we want to see. And the black culture, too, is like you want to see a nigga that stunts. You want to see someone that's out there actually putting on for your culture. Yep. So, I mean, bro, like it's we can take this many ways. But at the same time, <laughs> all, all I'm trying to say is that, like, I love what I do, bro. And I love what I create. And either you're going to fuck with me or you're not. Yeah. And tell them niggas like, hey, just keep that shit over there. Don't cross the fucking line. Uh -huh. Don't come over here thinking you can come up to me and say certain shit like I'm not going to pop my shit back. Because <laughs> exactly. you better come with the, you better be strapped up or something because nigga, you say the wrong shit to the wrong nigga, it's up. It can get ugly. It can get ugly. Be careful. I tell people all the time, bro. Like, I'm from the birds, bro. I'm from Bedford, Texas, right outside of Dallas. Like, I don't have to, like, put on a persona or you to think I'm hard and I'm this and that. I don't have to be that. But I know niggas that are. And I know plenty of people that are cut for me. Mm. So why do I got to be something or this perception of what you think a black man is when I can go out here and pop my shit and I know niggas know I'm real and they got my back? What's up? Come on. That's what's up right there. I got bro. my fashion too. It's called Free. Free? Free 99. Adidas. Free 99. Put my code in. Free. Free. Right? Free 99. <laughs> Hey, I don't got to go, hey, I gotta go to the mall or nothing. All my shit is place itemized. Okay, click, click, Free. click order. Free <laughs> I, want to, I went to the mall for the first time. I don't even know what this is. I was like, I need some clothes. You got them in the mall? Yeah, I went to the mall. Got me there some jeans. Yeah. You don't want to tell Adidas that. They were like, I don't want you going to the mall. jeans with a little shirt on, you know? Miles, we appreciate you pulling up to Gills Arena, man. Thank you. Looking forward to next season and all the best the rest of your career, bro. Absolutely. Much love, y'all. Thank you. We're going to be pushing it. All-star. Bring back the center so my make him get his 10 oh, times all-star. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop Gilles saying Arena. them old ass folks. Gills man. Arena from Vegas presented by Underdog Fantasy. We'll see y'all soon. Hold Ooh. on, man. I just want to show my shoes Come on, man. Hold on. You feel me? Hold on. Let me see that. Let me see that. Let me show my shoes off. Yeah. Let me show my shoes and shit. You know what I'm saying? I got my shits moving around, popping. And y'all don't know what they are, but they are. You know what I'm saying? I put my artwork on my shoes. These are all my designs. They say my shits is, you know, knockoffs and shit. But I do my shit. Greatness is greatness. You can detail this out. Fuck the haters. Bro, you see the silver tones. You got the gold nigga where you're doing with it. You can really pop off with it. Come on, my nigga. You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? We're in Vegas, baby! Appreciate y'all.